Hello and welcome to GeoNo. Today I'm going to show you how to contour, or for example, like the map in front of you, how to draw these lines that represent elevation. So on our exercise today, we'll be given elevation points and we need to connect the dots. So pretty much it's like playing connect the dots for adults. And so there are some rules that you need to follow to be able to get this done. But first, just so you know, the exercise that I'll be doing in this video today, I've put a link to in the description so you can download that and follow along. All right, let's go ahead and get started with some contour rules so you have some background of how to get started. So your contour interval is the vertical space between each contour and it must be kept the same throughout the map. All right, and contours will never cross. You'll never see that happen because it doesn't make sense because you cannot have two different elevations on the same point in space wouldn't happen. Contours always close, but sometimes they can close off the map, so you may not see them close. When a contour crosses a stream, which we'll do in our exercise today, it makes a V-shape pointing upstream, so you're going to need to figure out which way is upstream to be able to make that happen. And then most always you're going to go between a higher and a lower elevation. There's one exception to that that I can think of that I'll show you in the exercise today, just so you're prepared for all right, and last, if you have a depression or crater, you put tick marks on your contour to show that you're going downhill instead of up. Otherwise, it'll look like you're going up to a hilltop. So you need to put those tick marks. All right, so here is your map that we're going to be working with today. This is the exercise, so I hope you've downloaded it by now so you can follow along, or at least download it later and try and get the same results that we get today together. First thing you want to do is just become familiar with the map. So, for example, what's that blue thing? I'm guessing that you can figure that out and you figured it out already that it's a stream, right? So at some point we're going to have to cross a stream and we need to figure out which way's up, which way's down. So how could we figure that out? Where's the water coming from? Remember water flows downhill. So our higher elevations are over here to the east. I say east because I know north is up and then our lower elevations are to the west. So I know that it's flowing from east to west or right to left. So upstream is going to be to the right or to the east. So if we ever cross, we're going to need to point upstream. All right, another thing you need to figure out is your contour interval. Uh, sometimes it's given to you, sometimes your teacher just says use a 50-foot contour interval. But in our case, it's not given to us, and in real life, it's not given to you. So you need to figure it out. So let's figure it out. Let's look for our lowest and our highest elevation, and that way we can know exactly what would be an appropriate contour interval based on how much elevation difference we have. So our lowest elevation is 300, which we can see over here in the west. And then our highest elevation is 930, which we can see down here in the southeast. All right, so 930 minus 300 is 630. So our total elevation difference is 630 feet. So what would be an appropriate contour interval for that? Probably not like five, because then you're going to have to draw so many lines and it's going to be so crowded. And probably not a hundred, because then you're only going to have six lines and you won't have enough detail. So you want to comp compromise somewhere in there between 25 and 50. In our case, for simplicity's sake, we're going to go with 50. All right. On your contour map, you could start anywhere. It really doesn't matter. Some people like to start with the lowest elevation and work their way up. Some people like to start with the higher and work their way down. In my case, I just like to start at the bottom of the page, but honestly, it does not matter. And just remember, as you're contouring, the contours never cross. When you cross a stream, you have to make a V-shape upstream, or a cat ear, as I like to say. And most always, you're going to go between a higher and a lower elevation. And then once, your con once one contour is drawn, the contours nearby tend to follow a similar pattern. So that's really nice. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of contouring. Let me get my pointer or my pen. So you'll have to forgive me, it's not going to be a perfect drawing just because of the nature of drawing with a mouse and my drawing abilities combined with that is not going to help anything. So just forgive the, the errors in drawing and, and just bear with me on that. Okay, so let's start anywhere. Let's just maybe start with our 550. So I'm, I just am going to draw it off the map because we don't know where it goes that way exactly. And remember, you always have to go between a lower and a higher number. So in this case, a lower number is 525 and a higher number is 575. And 550 fits perfectly between there. So I can come up 
and go and hit this other 550. Now, I got to be careful here because I can't go up here to the northwest because I would be going between two lower numbers. And I can't go this way because I would be going between two higher numbers. So I need to go between the 500 and the 575 and hit this other 550. Go between the 500 and the 600, hit this other 550. Point upstream, since we have to cross the stream to get to this 550. And then wrap back around. And then come and hit this 550. Go between the 500 and the 600, hit that 550. Go between the 500 and the 625. And we're going to wrap around. I didn't hit the dot perfectly there, but that's okay. And then just go off the map because we don't know exactly what happens there. All right, so the next contour we're going to do if we're working our way to the west is 500 since we're going by 50s. So we're going to go down by 50. And let's connect to our 500 just off, off the page. Connect to that 500. There's a lot of 500s here to help guide us. And here we have to cross another stream. So just be prepared to cat ear. Cross the stream and then hit that 500. And again, the really nice thing is once you've got one drawn, all of the others tend to follow the same pattern. So you're in good shape. All right, let's go to 450. There we go. Go between a lower and a higher. So we went between 400 and 475. Hit that 450. Come to this 450. And we'll hit this 450. It's going to follow a similar pattern, but it just goes off the map. All right, let's do 400. That's the next one. Remember, cat ear. All right, there we go. We went between a smaller and a bigger number. 350 is the next one. Let's hit that. There we go. And then 300, we're just going to see a little bit of that. And there we go. So we've completed the map to the west. Let's work on it to the east where it's a little bit more complicated. All right. So it looks like our next one up is 600. If we're going, since we started at 550, we're going to go up to 600. We'll just go off the page, come between 575 and 700, come between 650 and 575, come between 575 and 700, hit that 600, come between 550 and 650, hit that 600, hit that 600, and come off the page. All right, so before you just go off the page with this 650, Look that there's two 650s on the bottom. So it looks like we're starting to form a circle, which means we're probably it's close to a hilltop. So we're going to go ahead and just connect. We'll draw it off the page there because we don't have enough room to connect our 650s. That way we can connect those 650s, come between 600 and 700, come between 600 and 700 there, hit our 650, come between 600 and 700 and go off the page. Let's hit our 700 and go all the way around just like before. Go between 650 and 750. Go up to 700. Come between 650 and 800. Hit our... Don't hit that 750 and then go off to your 700. And then I bet we're going to make a complete loop with this 750. So we'll go between 800 and 700. We'll hit this 750. We'll come up here and hit this 750. Come between 700 and 800 and complete the loop. And then we'll do the same thing with 800. So we'll come between 750 and 850. Come down here between 850 and 750. Hit that 800. Hit that 800. And then hit this 800. So it comes in a full circle. Now we'll go to this 850. Come around. Come around. And then our last circle is going to be the 900. How do I know that's the last one? Because 930 is not big enough to give us another contour. It says that's the highest point on the map. We're not going to have another contour because the next one up would be 950. All right, let's start up here in the northeast corner where it's a little bit more complex. So you'll notice that this 550, remember it came up, pointed off, and wrapped back around. So that's actually probably what this 600 may be doing is coming up here, pointing upstream, and coming back and wrapping around to this 600. And we can just connect our 600s, making sure we're going between a smaller and a bigger number. And then we will just take it off the, sh the screen because we or off the map because we don't see exactly what happens since our map is cut off. This is where it gets a little more complex. You see a lot of 650s. I'm going to have to draw it a certain way, and then I'll show you why that is 
with another little graphic in just a second. But hopefully this helps you understand the idea. All right, so come between 625 and 675 and connect that 650. But you'll notice there's still three more 650s. Why? And let me show you with just a little demonstration of another graphic. Okay, let me try and make sense of all of these 650s for you. So if I draw a profile of a volcano, you come up to the top, come down into the crater, and come down the other side. So if you're coming up and you reach 600 feet in elevation, or 650 feet in elevation right there, and then you come up to the top of it, that's 675, and then you come back down to 650. And then over here is the same thing, right? So for that reason, since you don't go up another 50 feet, you don't have a contour representing this top little ridge here. So you have a contour that's a smaller inner contour and a contour representing the outer 650. So that's why you have so many 650s there separated by that 675. All right, hopefully that helped you understand why there's going to be a bigger outer circle and a smaller inner circle. So let's go ahead and complete it. This 650 is going to connect to the connect to this 650. It's going to come between 620, 675, and then it's just going to wrap around like that. Just remember that you've got to have these tick marks there, otherwise it's going to look like it's a hilltop, but in fact it's a crater at the top of a volcano. I hope this helps you be able to learn how to contour a little bit more. The nice thing is if you just follow these rules, you'll be able to do this with any map. The biggest thing you need to remember is going between that higher and lower elevation. If you're following that rule, most likely you're going to be on the right track. And if you, th if you find it being a little bit tricky, then maybe you've got something a little bit different going on, like a crater at the top of a volcano or something along those lines. So hopefully this helps you. Please, if it does, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much for watching.